Good morning and welcome to this National Assembly Live Proceedings, today being Wednesday, July 15, 2020. This broadcast is courtesy of the Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit in collaboration with the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Gladys Mungai. Let's start by having a look at the highlights of the order of business this morning. The leader of majority will be tabling a bill on the Public Finance Management Amendment, National Assembly Bill Number 23 of 2020. The principal object of the bill is to amend the Public Finance Management Act of 2012 in order to provide for guarantees by the Cabinet Secretary for loans advanced to micro, small and medium enterprises. The bill consists of five clauses. And among the clauses is clause, clause 2 of the bill, which provides for the amendment of Section 2 of the Act to insert new definitions of micro-enterprises, medium enterprises, and small enterprises. Clause 4 of the bill provides for the amendment of Section 58 of the Act by inserting new subsections of the granting of guarantees by the Cabinet Secretary for credit extended to micro, small, and medium enterprises, which do not have sufficient security for the credit extended to them. Two motions will equally be tabled in today's morning session. The first one is the procedural motion by the leader of majority on the reduction of the publication period for a specified bill that notwithstanding the provisions of standing orders number 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period for the Public Finance Management National Assembly Bill Number 23 of 2020 from 14 to 6 days. The second motion will be the, by the chairperson of the Committee on Selection. The motion will be on the appointment of members of specified committees. That they are that after further of the resolution of the House on Tuesday, 5th December 2017, appointing members of various committees and pursuant to the provisions of Standing Orders Number 173, this House further approves the appointment of the following members to the respective committees as specified there under the Departmental Committees are Administrative and National Security, Agriculture and Livestock, Communication, Information and Innovation, Defense and Foreign Relations, Education and Research, Energy, Environment and Natural Resources, Finance and National Planning, among others. Order number seven on questions. Pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 42A, subsection 5, the following members will ask for a reply from uh, specified departmental committees. Following questions by private notice, the member for the Rakanidi County, Honorable Beatrice Nyaga, to ask the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries. What is the status of low caste eradication in the country? and in particular in the lower part of Tharakanidhi County, are there measures put in place by the government to ensure that farmers whose crops and other products destroyed by locusts are compensated for the losses suffered? Those questions will be replied before the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. The MP for Mwingi North, Honorable Paul Nzengu, will ask the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and Coordination of National Government that could the Cabinet Secretary explain the status of investigations into the road accident involving a motor vehicle registration number KBM 881V at Toyota Prado, also registered SGKB 214E, allegedly assigned to the Office of the Deputy President, and a motorcycle registration number KMCT 356V, which occurred along Kismayo Road, resulting into the death of one Patrick Mutia, as reported at Garissa Police Station, occurrence book number 0709022015. 
and when will the family of the deceased be compensated for the loss of their loved one? That particular question will be replied before the Committee on Administration and National Security. The nominated member, Honorable Wilson Sosion, will ask the Cabinet Secretary for health. The could the Cabinet Secretary provide the rationale behind the use of health index in the allocation of 5 billion Kenya shillings conditional grants funding extended to the county governments by the national government for mitigating COVID-19 pandemic? How much of the funding has been allocated for the operations and maintenance of the academic institutions as a result of being used as quarantine facilities? And are there plans in place to support counties without COVID-19 budgetary allocations and which cannot support establishment of adequate suitable quarantine isolation facilities? Could the Cabinet Secretary also provide a list of learning institutions that are currently being used as quarantine facilities in the 47 counties and also provide the measures the Ministry has put in place to maintain and restore the infrastructure of these institutions during and after the COVID-19 pandemic? That question will be replied before the Departmental Committee on Health. On ordinary questions, the nominated member, Honorable Nasir Sahal, will ask the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure and Housing, Urban Development and Public Works. The call the Cabinet Secretary explain the construction of Mogadase Samatar Road in Wajir County that has stalled despite the project having received funding from the national government. Could the Cabinet Secretary indicate the construction of the said road is expected to resume and when it will be completed? That question will be replied by the Transport, Public and Housing Committee. Member for Trukana North, Honorable Christopher Nakuleu, to ask the Cabinet Secretary for Wildlife and Tourism what measures are put in place to contain the increased cases of crocodile attacks on human beings along the Lake Trukana, particularly in Namkuse and Nakochui areas. On your screens is the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Moses Cheboy, making his way into the chamber. I'll hand you now over for the live broadcast. Enjoy your viewing. Good morning. Honorable members, let's pray. Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of the people, we beseech you to behold with your abundant favor as your servants, whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of important trusts in this republic. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled, grant that we treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberations in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of our country and of those whose interest you have committed to our charge. Amen. Members, we have the required quorum, and therefore, business will begin. Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. Order number three, messages. Honorable members, I have uh, a message. And honorable members, pursuant to provisions of Standing Order 41, I wish to report to the House that I have received a message from the Senate regarding 
its passage of the following three bills. One, the Pandemic Response and Management Bill, Senate Bill Number 6 of 2020. Two, the Cancer Prevention and Control Amendment Bill, Senate Bill Number 9 of 2019. And three, the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority Amendment Bill, Senate Bill Number 38 of 2018. Honorable members, the first message relating to the passage of Pandemic and Management Bill, Senate Bill Number 6 of 2020, indicates that the bill seeks to provide a legal framework for a coordinated response and management of activities during a pandemic and provide temporary measures and relief during a pandemic. Close the quote. The second message is in respect of the passage of the Cancer Prevention Control Amendment Bill, Senate Bill Number 9 of 2019, which is seeking to provide for additional functions of county government in prevention and treatment of cancer. The third message is in respect of the passage of the Kenya Medical Supplies Amendment Bill, Senate Bill Number 38 of 2018, which seeks to provide a collaboration between Kenya Medical Supplies Authority and the county governments. Honorable members, the message conveys in part that the Senate considers, considered and passed the said bill with amendments on Tuesday, 30th June 2020, and now six concurrence of the National Assembly. Honorable members, Standing Order Number 143, 1A requires the Speaker to cause the bill received from the Senate to be read a first time upon conveyance of its message. Accordingly, I direct that the bill be scheduled for a first reading during the next sitting of the House. Further, paragraph 2 of the Standing Order 143 provides that following the reading, the Speaker shall within reasonable time pronounce his or her opinion contemplated under Article 114.2 of the Constitution. The, opi the opinion envisioned under Standing Order 143.2 is a pronouncement by the Speaker on whether the bill originating from the Senate is a money bill in terms of Article 114 of the Constitution. In this regard, I direct that after the first reading, the bills be referred to the Parliamentary Budget Office to offer the Speaker the advice contemplated under Standing Order 143.2. Thereafter, I shall guide the House accordingly on how to proceed with the consideration of each of the three bills. I thank you. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. Under that particular order, I see the leader of majority has uh, some papers to lay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House. Uh, today, Wednesday, July 15th, 2020, morning sitting. Number one, the legal notice number 114 of 2020 uh, relating to the agreement for the avoidance of double taxation between the government of the Republic of Kenya and the government of the Republic of Mauritius from the National Treasury and Planning. Number two, the 2019 budget review and outlook paper from the National Treasury and Planning. Uh, number three, notice to the central bank of the price stability target and the economic policy of the government for the financial year 2020-2021 budget from the National Planning and uh, National Treasury and Planning. And me number four, memorandum on the access as accession uh, to the Africa Charter on Democracy, Election and Governance from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, the fifth paper, the fourth report on treaties ratified by the Republic of Kenya from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, number six, the Bank Supervision Annual Report 2018 from the Central Bank of Kenya. And lastly, number seven, the Annual Report for the Financial Year 2017-2018 from the Public Procurement Regulatory uh, Authority. Very well, now we move to the next one by the Chairperson, Departmental Committee on Finance and Planning. Oh, that's the vice chair, Honorable Dirangu. What number is your? 
number 15. I'm trying to look for it somewhere. Said number 15. I'm not able to see one uh, number 15 from here. I probably would suggest if you are not able to, but it's not 15 for sure, because there is no 15. Well, come to the dispatch box. Uh, oh, you have it now. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg today but, the following paper. But, but, but even as you proceed, I think that should be number 48. It is indicated as number 15, Mr. Speaker. Well, there must be some problem somewhere. So proceed. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I beg today the following paper on the table of the House today, Wednesday, 15th of July, 2020, morning sitting. Report of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning on the vetting of a nominee for appointment as the Auditor General of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So we go to the next order. Order number six, notices of motion. Again, we'll start with you, the Chair, Finance. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, I beg to give notice of the following motion that taking into consideration the findings of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning in its report on the vetting of the nominee for appointment as the Auditor General laid on the table of the House on Wednesday, 15th of July, 2020, and pursuant to the provisions of Article 229.1 of the Constitution, Section 11, Bracket 8, of the Public Audit Act 2015 and Section 3 and 8 of the Public Appointment Parliamentary Approval Act 2011, this House approves the appointment of Ms. Nancy Janet Kaboi Gadugu as the Auditor General of the Republic of Kenya. Okay, and for confirmation, your seat is number 145. Thank you. So Mr. assuming uh, you are going to have an issue later, it's 145. Thank you. Next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. Under this particular order, we will start with, the, with questions, and we will start with the uh, one by private notice by the member for the Rakanizi County, Honorable Beatrice Nyaga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is, is 011 of 2020. One, what is the status of locust eradication in the country, and in particular in the lower part of the Rakanidi, in the Rakanidi County? Two, are there measures put in place by the government to ensure that farmers whose crops and other products destroyed by the locust are compensated for the losses suffered? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. That one will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. Now we go to, yeah, there is also another one by private notice by the member from Wingy North. Honorable Nzegu. Speaker, I raise to ask uh, question number 012 of 2020, the Cab Cabinet Secretary for Interior and Coordination of National Government. Could the Cabinet Secretary explain the status of investigations into the road accident involving a motor vehicle registration number KBM 881V, Toyota Prado, also registered number GKB 
214E, allegedly assigned to the office of the deputy president and a motor vehicle, a, mo a motorcycle of registration number KMCT 356V, which occurred along Kismayu Road near Mustag Mustagbol filling station in Garissa County on the 9th of February 2015, resulting in the death of one Patrick Mutia Mudui of identification number 29726448 as reported in Garissa Police Station occurrence book number 070902 stroke 2015 and two of that when will the family of the deceased be compensated for the loss of their loved one and Mr. Speaker, this question I'm asking in this house for the second time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, now that you've asked it uh, uh, under private notice, it definitely will be coming quickly. So that will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security. The last on that particular category is by the by Honorable Socion, Honorable Wilson Socion. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to ask question number 13 of 2020, directed to the Cabinet Secretary for Health. One, could the Cabinet Secretary provide the rationale behind the use of health index in the allocation of Kenya shillings 5 billion conditional grants funding extended to the county government by the national government for mitigating the COVID-19 pandemic? Two, could the cabinet secretary provide a list of all learning institutions that are currently being used as quarantine facilities in any of the 47 counties and also provide the measures the ministry has put in place to maintain and restore the infrastructure of these institutions during and after the COVID-19 pandemic? Three, how much funding has been allocated for operations and maintenance of these academic institutions as a result of being used as quarantine facilities? And lastly, Mr. Speaker, are there plans in place to support counties without COVID-19 budgetary allocations and which cannot support establishment of adequate and suitable quarantine and isolation facilities? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. So that one will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Health. Now we go to the ordinary questions, and I'll start off with Honorable Nashri Sahal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to ask question 029 stroke 2020. My question goes to the cabinet secretary of transport for transport infrastructure, housing, urban development and public works. One, could the cabinet secretary explain why the construction of Madogashe Samata Road in Wajer County has stalled despite the project having received funding from the national government? Two, could the cabinet secretary indicate when construction of the said road is expected to resume and when it will be completed? Thank you. Okay. That one will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Transport, Public Works and Housing. Next is the, by the member for Turkana, North, Honorable Christopher Nakuleu. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Sp Honorable Speaker, I rise to ask question number 67 of 2020 to directed to the Cabinet Secretary for Wildlife and Tourism. One, what measures are in place 
to contain increased cases of crocodile attacks on human beings along Lake Turkana, particularly in Kalokol, Elie, Namukuse, Obtangaber, and Najiku areas. Second, could the ministry consider compensating families of the persons who have lost their lives as a result of the said crocodile attacks, including the family of a young man named Peter Dongol from Kalosep area, Kataboy location, Trukan North constituency, who lost his life uh, following an attack on 25th February 2020. Third, what measures are in place to ensure safety of navigation by fishermen and tourists in Lake Turkana, particularly along the beach in Elias Spring, Kalokol, and Kataboy areas that have been negatively affected by insecurity and criminal attacks? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, that one will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. Next will be the member for Nakuru Town East, Honorable David Kekaria. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this question I did ask a long time ago, and it was answered. I, in, fa in fact, I have... I was answered, and last, last week I was before the Committee on Transport and I got my answer. So but this I have, one has I have been eight others which are pending, Honorable Speaker. So maybe in the afternoon I could be given an opportunity to ask one of the Th that other I, eight. Th that one, Honorable Gikari, I'll not be able to help you at this point in time because I'm not even aware which ones you're asking about, you're, you're talking about. Yes. But my satisfaction is the fact that actually you have been answered to your satisfaction exactly. on this particular one. Thank you. So Mr. then Speaker. we will save time and therefore move to the member for Maragua, Honorable Mary Wamawa. Is Honorable Wamawa in the house? As we get to know we probably don't have any other questions, so that one will be left for another sitting. Now we will move to statements. And on statements, we will start with the Honorable Paul Koinange, the Chairman of the Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I have uh, three statements to make. Let me start with a statement uh, for Honorable Katib E. Mwashetani, who sought to be informed on extrajudicial killings in Samweni constituency. Honorable Speaker, on the 29th May 2020, at about 2300 hours, police officers were on patrol within Kimbundani area, south coast, Diani following leads and intelligence on presence of a Shabab operatives within the said area. They were being led by a suspected recruiter who, upon interrogation, agreed to lead the officers to the house of one Al Shabab suspect named Mapenzi Alas Panya within Kibudani. On reaching the sus suspect's house, the officers ordered him to open the door, but instead the suspect threw a, a grenade towards the officers, which prompted the officers to open fire, fatally injuring him and two minors, namely Ramadan Chitswa, age six years, and Swale Chitswa, age four years, who the suspect has used as human shields. Honorable Speaker, a search of the scene was conducted where a live grenade and police jungle uniform were recovered. An inquest file number four, stock 2020, has been opened and investigations are ongoing. Once the investigations are complete, the file will be forwarded to the Director of Public Prosecutions for perusal and further advice. Honorable Speaker, 
The police are guided by constitution, the National Police Service Act, and standing orders on carrying out their mandate. If any police officer upon investigation is found to have violated the law, appropriate action is taken against the officer. Honorable Speaker, the ministry does not have a compensation vote and compensation can only be effected through a judicial process. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well, uh, Honorable Koinanga, I think so that we can save time. You could proceed to the sec next, uh, the others, and then I will open up for the specific members who want to have uh, questions on those but, uh, on different ones. Is that comfortable with you, or you want us to dispense with each and five? Well, we could dispense. I'm very comfortable, Honorable Speaker. Let me go to the second uh, statement, Honorable Speaker. And the second statement, uh, Honorable Speaker, the member of Parliament for Madare constituency, Honorable Tom Oluoch MP, has requested for a statement regarding extrajudicial killings in Madare constituency. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, on the 1st June 2020, members of the public reported to the police that there was a person lying dead with a suspected bullet wound at Area 3C, Mabati Ward, Madare constituency. Police officers visited the scene but were prevented by angry members of public from collecting the body on allegations that the deceased was supposed to have been shot by the police. Later, the police officers managed to collect the body, which had a bullet wound on the chest and escorted to the mortuary. During the incident, Honorable Speaker, there was a standoff between the rowdy members of the public, and this caused a lot of tension in Mabatini area of Madare. Honorable Speaker, in accordance with the provisions of the law, an inquest file, number one, 2020, has been opened, and the same will be placed before a competent court with jurisdiction for public inquest. Any person found capable during the inquest will be dealt according to the law. Honorable Speaker, the investigation leading to the disappearance of one Michael Njau, alias Cobra, who went missing on his way from Thika town, has been launched by the director of investigation, detectives from Thika, where the matter was reported and appropriate action will be taken against those found capable after, comple after completion of investigation. Honorable Speaker, investigation in the death of one Yasin Moyo, aged 13 years, who was shot dead while standing on balcony, balcony of their residential home uh, has been completed and a duplicate file forwarded to OPP for ODPP for Peruso and advice on 21st April 2020. Honorable Speaker, National Police Service has been carrying out sensitization campaigns to sensitize officers on how to handle the public during the enforcement of the curfew and other measures to curb spread of COVID-19. I would also, Honorable Speaker, wish to state that the National Police Service has been taking both disciplinary and legal action against officers violating the law during enforcement. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yes, uh, Honorable Chair, you will go again to the next one, but when I will be opening it for members to seek interventions, uh, we will do it uh, statement by statement. Then it will be still okay. Okay. So let's go to the third one, the one, if you are ready on the one by, uh, from the, the request by Honorable yeah. Caleb Positang. Yeah, thank you, most of life, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker Kaleb Kasitani, the Member of Parliament uh, for Soy Constituency, sought a statement on rape and killings of children in Soy Constituency. 
uh, honorable speaker, uh, this was one of the most painful statement uh, given to the committee in regard to insecurity in different areas. And honorable speaker, for the last five months, Soy constituency has reported seven cases of rape and killing of minors as follows. On 1st October 2019, at about 030 hours, one Beatrice Wanyonyi, a Luhia female, had reported that on 30th September 2019, she was left at her daughter, she left her daughter, Emma Wanyota, a Luhia female aged 21 years, in the house and went to work. When she returned home at 21.45 hours, she found the house key abandoned at the main gate. Upon opening the door, she found blood stains all over the house and the daughter was missing. Police were informed and visited the scene. They combed the surrounding and found the body of the deceased in the nearby Napier grass plantation with the legs chopped off, the left arm was chopped below the elbow, the scene was processed and body removed to Kitale level five, county mortuary awaiting postmortem. Honorable speaker, investigations were launched and one ED Mostafa, aged 31 years, a former boyfriend to the deceased was arrested. A search was conducted in his house and a mobile phone, make techno, a laptop, make Dell, and a black bag were recovered. Also the suspect's blood, stained clothes, were recovered, soaked in a, basin, in a basin. The mother of the deceased positively identified the recovered items as belonging to her deceased daughter. The suspect, Honorable Seeker, was arraigned before Eldoret Law Courts, Vide Moise Bridge, CR number 814, stroke 177, stroke 2019, Eldoret High Court, file number 62, stroke 2019. The case is pending before court, and the next date of hearing will be on 28th of July 2020. Honorable Seeker, on 1st, January 2020, at about 03.50 hours, the area chief for Moise Bridge location, Mr. Wilson Sirma, reported that there was a dead body lying at Soweto area within Moise Bridge location. The police officers visited the scene and found a dead body of one Stacy Nabiswa, a Luhia female juvenile, aged 11 years, lying naked in a thicket. The head was twisted backwards and blood was oozing from her private parts. The scene processed and the body removed to Kitale Level 5 County Mortuary awaiting post-mortem. Honorable Speaker, investigation commenced and two suspects, Mr. Solomon Mwaneki Getau and June Wanjiro Mwaneki, who are neighbors of the deceased were arrested. A case file number at Moise Bridge Police Station, CR 418-01-2020, was opened. The file was forwarded to the ODPP for perusal and direction. And upon perusal, the ODPP directed that there was no sufficient evidence to subject the suspect for trial and hence the recommended he recommended the case be withdrawn under section 887A pending further investigation. Honorable Speaker, on 4th February 2020, at about 900 hours, Mrs. Rael Sugut, a resident of Quinet Village, reported that her daughter, Emelda Koske, a Nandi juvenile aged 13, and a pupil of Queen Anne Primary School was lured to the staff room and defiled by the school watchman. Police visited the scene, and one suspect, Mr. Ronald Amudawi, 
Kisanya Aluhia Adud, age 48 years, was arrested. He was arraigned before Eldoret Law Court, Vaitsoi Police Station CR 835 stroke 18 of 2020, court file number 26, 2020. The next day of hearing will be on 13th July 2020. That was on Monday, Honorable Speaker. On 15 February 2020, at about 1600 hours, the Chief Moise Bridge location, Mr. Wilson Sirma, reported that a dead body was sighted at Quenet village. Police visited the scene and found a body of a Kikuyu female juvenile, age 13 years old, a standard six people at Moise Bridge Township Primary School. At examining the body, it was discovered that the deceased was strangled using a bag she was carrying. Blood was oozing from her private parts. It was established that she was last seen in company of a tall, slim, middle-aged man in his late 20s. The deceased was identified as Lucy Wanjiko, seen processed and body removed to Kitale Level 5 County Hospital. Honorable Speaker, the investigation was launched and one Kennedy Andole, the deceased stepfather, was arrested and arraigned before Eldoret Locos by Moise Bridge Police Station, CR 814-56 or 2020 court file number 2120. The next date of hearing will be 9th July 2020. Honorable Speaker, that was on last Thursday. Honorable Speaker, on 27 February 2020, at about 0800 hours, it was reported by one Valentine Jemutai Anandi juvenile that eight years that she went to buy milk at the homestead of one Evans Kibiwot, a Maraquet male adult aged 38 years, while at the homestead, the accused took her to his house and defiled her severally. The accused threatened to kill her if she informs her mother. Police visited the scene and lodged investigation. They arrested the suspect and he was arraigned in Eldoret Law Courts, Vaivide Soy Police Station, uh, CR 835 stroke 37 of 2020, court file number 26 of 2020. The next date, of hearing will be 23rd July, and that is next week on Thursday, Honorable Speaker. On 23rd April 2020, at 23 hours, one Betty Chepkurui, a Nandi film juvenile aged 6, 17 years, a resident of Rimoi village, Soy, sublocation, reported that on 26 April 2020, she was called by Bethel Kiplimo, a Nandi male, aged 20 years, to his house, and on arrival, the accused defiled her severally. Police visited the scene, arrested the accused, and escorted the victim to hospital for examination and treatment. The accused was arraigned before Eldoret Law Court, Vaitsoi Police Station, uh, CR number 835, stroke 50, 2020, Court file number 84, 2020. The next date of the hearing was uh, June 29th. Honorable Speaker, finally, on 22nd May 2020, one Lucy Modoni reported at Moise Bridge Police Station by OB number 33, stroke 22, 5 of 2020, a case of a missing person by the name of Grace Jerry, a Kikuyu female, juvenile aged 13 years, who is the daughter to the reportee. On 18th June 2020, one Henry Wanjana Kuloba, a casual laborer at Serenoi Farm, reported that while patrolling the farm along the river bank, he came across human skull and some clothes suspected to be for a young girl. Police visited the scene and discovered a human being, skull, and some body parts. The clothes were identified by the reportee to be for a missing daughter. Investigation commenced and case 
pending under investigation. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, there is adequate deployment of police officers in Moyes Bridge and Soy Police Stations. Plans under way to deploy more officers to the newly established police station Ziwa, Kepkeres, Seguero, Kipsomba, and Quinet police stations. All police stations will be considered for motor vehicles and other equipment during the next procurement circle. Honorable Speaker, the following are the strategies which have been put in place to curb cases of defilement, rape, and killings in Swai constituency. One, enhance food and mobile patrol by police officers in the affected areas and other areas. Second, enhance community policing and Nyumbakumi initiative. And thirdly, Honorable Speaker, frequent multi-agency barrazas at locational, sub-collocational, and village levels to sensitize parents, guardians on their responsibility as personal security of the defendants. And fourthly, sharing of information regarding morality of our youth in churches, mosques, and social gathering, and also, I add, in the social media, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, also fifthly, enhance good relationship between the police and the members of the public, and sixthly, ensure that all perpetrators of crime are arrested, proper and prompt investigations to be carried out. And Honorable Speaker, as I conclude, the ministry does not have, does not have a compensation vote and compensation can only be effected through the judicial process. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. You had another one, or we, we want to put it for another day. I know the, the, the last one was very heavy. No, the, the last, ne, let me do this one. Honorable Speaker, this is just something I want your guidance because uh, we have been having a ping pong between the Ministry of uh, Interior and Devolution. And uh, Honorable Speaker, um, I wish to state as follows that on 2nd June, uh, 2020, Honorable Esther Pasaris, member for Nairobi City County, sought a, a statement from the Chairperson Departmental Committee on Administration. And uh, this regarding distribution of food relief across the county, and in particular Nairobi County, during the COVID-19. Honorable Speaker, in April 2020, the committee had received a request for a statement on the same subject from Honorable Gishimu, uh, Gedenji, member for Geshogo. Uh, the committee directed the statement request to the Ministry of Interior and Coordination and the uh, government to reply, but it was read back to us, then we sent it again to the devolution. And the devolution answered the same. Honorable Speaker, but upon receipt of Honorable Pasari's statement request on, on 3rd of June, the committee directed it to the Ministry of Devolution for reply having previously replied the one by Honorable Gishimo. But this time, Honorable Speaker, they said we take it back to the interior. So Honorable Speaker, it has been a ping pong. So I would like to, uh, in this circumstance that I mean, Honorable Speaker, maybe I wish to seek your guidance and direction to have uh, this question of uh, Honorable Pasari sorted once and for all. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, now that it is live in your committee, let, let's first deal with these other ones as I consult on the direction we should take on that last one by Honorable Pasaris. So I will open up for any member who wishes to have some intervention, two per question, uh, two per statement. We will start with the one by Honorable Katib Mwashetani. If he's there, he would have the first shot. Then we'd see if there's any other member who has an interest. So, Honorable Mashiatani, is he in the house? Well, I don't see it, and I also don't see a lot of interest in that particular one. But, Honorable Chair, I must commend you and your committee for a very detailed uh, response. 
this particularly even on the, 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 the third one. Very detailed and comprehensive. Probably that's why not many members want to seek intervention because it was self-explanatory. So we'll go to the next one by the Honorable Tom Watch. Is he in the house? Are we sure that this is Honorable Watch? Let me confirm beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes, yes, I, yes I, it is. I, I think that must be a watch. Yes, the one and only from Madare. Uh, I want to thank the Honorable Chair, uh, Bonakoinange. I did receive this statement yesterday at Peru Street, and I want to say um, uh, it is partially satisfactory, uh, but there are two areas for which I require clarification and further comment. Let me begin with the one for Yasin Moyo, and in respect of Yasin Moyo, the 13-year-old who was killed from uh, Kia Michael, the matter came up before court, and I spoke to the, uh, the parents this morning, and the issue that I want to clarify and ask about is about right of access to justice, because what the family need now is justice for the little 13-year boy who would have sat his KCSE later this year. And when the matter appeared before court, um, 30 police... KCSE or KCPE? KCPE. Uh, yes, thank uh, you for the clarification. I, I thought you should be... <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, thank you. There were 30 police officers camping at the courts, both inside and out of the courts, and the parents felt both intimidated uh, and, and insecure, uh, raising the question as to whether justice will be done or that there is a perceived threat uh, to the extent that uh, it appears as if down the line this case may not yield the justice. And you know it is said that justice must not only be done, but be seen to be done. The second issue for which clarification is required here is what is the status of the police officer who has been arraigned in court? Is he interdicted? Is he still at his uh, uh, station of work? These are things that touch on, on the question of justice and the family need to put closure to that. The second clarification and that one that concerns me most is the one about um, Michael Njao Alias Gorba, who disappeared almost four months ago. And the statement in his response just says, the director of criminal investigation is investigating and those found culpable after investigations will be brought to book. I find that extremely uh, uh, vague unsatisfactory and very casual, Honorable Speaker, and I would urge the Chair to try and see whether we can get more information from this. A Kenyan cannot just disappear. In this time and age, with our current constitution, in fact, at Article 25, that speaks to the question of the right to life and the right to have as corpus, those two rights, Honorable Speaker, are inalienable. They cannot be taken away. The family requires to put closure to this and to have the body produced either dead or alive. And it is insufficient for the statement or the CS to merely say they are investigating four months down the line. I want to conclude my clarification with the issue of um, James Muthi Njeru. And again, uh, I'd like to ask the chair to clarify what is the identity of the police officer if they have found who was the person who shot the bullet that killed uh, Elias Vaite. Has it been interdicted? What is the status of the inquest? Because they have indicated here that an inquest has been opened. It is open-ended, no time, no indication, so that the family can be able to find representation and other remedies. Otherwise, Honorable Speaker, I thank you very much. But, but uh, question, were you invited to the committee when they were handling this matter? No, I, I got this via WhatsApp from the clerk. I wasn't invited to the committee. If they invited because, me, yeah, I didn't see the text. Because there are quite a number of, uh, you've raised very weighty issues which could have been handled much easier at the committee uh, stage, at the committee level. And the other one which you were asking, what were the particular status on when a police is arraigned in court, Yes. what happens? It is fairly straightforward that uh, definitely they would be interdicted the only thing I wanted to know from you is if you are actually alleging that the police was not interdicted. That would have been very valid, or you have no idea. 
I have no idea, have no and, idea. I, and I followed Honorable Speaker, yes. the comments of the Inspector General when he appeared on Citizen recently. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, uh, the, the, what you're saying is true. He did indicate that upon being uh, arraigned in court, they should be interdicted. But under the right of access to information, because I wasn't in the committee, it would be good for me and for the family that they know that actual interdiction took place. Because there is a practice in Kenya where a police officer accused of such things is merely moved to another police station. So we want to know that they have not been moved to another place where they will perpetrate similar uh, okay. actions. Okay. Yeah. Let's have the chair uh, responding to it briefly. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, one, I would like us to have a time with the committee and uh, Honorable Tom so we can be able to address other issues which is not uh, satisfactory. But uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, of late when we met uh, the National Police Service Commission, we realized that already we have more than 2,000 police officers who have been interdicted so I want to assure uh, Tom that nobody who, has already, who is involved in any uh, a case like this one will be left to stay in uh, his official duties day to day. And also regarding the DCIA, if he comes, we'll follow the issue for him to make sure that justice is done for his people. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Very well. So we will open up to the next one because uh, you have already responded to it, and that one I have seen uh, Honorable Tongi uh, would wish to speak, and I know he's in other lobbies, so he should come in. And uh, for the members who would want also to, be, to contribute on that particular one, we'll give an opportunity. So on the second one, we will start with uh, the Honorable Caleb Kosetani himself, if he is within the House. Honorable Kosetani. Okay, as we wait for Honorable Kositani, Honorable Tongi, uh, is it on this particular one uh, by the member for Soy, or which one are we? Uh, are the, the, uh, when I speak at the response that we got from Honorable Kuinange on uh, issues security. Actually, all of them, the, the, all, all of them that he responded to are on security, actually. Yes. Up, other than the one that we did not get to, that is the one by Honorable Pasari. So which one do you want to seek clarification? Uh, the, the, the one for Moist Bridge. Okay, that is the one actually I have given you an opportunity on. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the response which has been given to us by Honorable Chairman Paul Koinange. Mr. Speaker, as you appreciate uh, the responses that were given are generic throughout the country. In my constituency, Mr. Speaker, uh, Keumbu, particularly in Yaribari Church constituency, we have had similar cases of insecurity. And we have raised the similar concerns. And I want to agree with what the response he has given because it's going to address our concerns as a country. Mr. Speaker, without security, even businesses cannot work. Without security, Mr. Speaker, our our communities will not live in, ha in harmony and in peace. We will not, en not ensure that our people have uh, achieved the, what they are meant to do because we have suffered and, uh, and uh, we need to do something about it, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have a challenge in Keumbu particularly and it is a lot of insecurity and we have already raised it with the relevant officers and I would wish that the chairman picks it up because we have already shared at a personal level because there is a lot of insecurity and the Keumbu is one of the big business centers in Kisi and in particular in my constituency. If we cannot have it secured, Mr. Speaker, I fear that the businesses and the, the business people are going to run away and we have a town which has everybody in that city. We would wish to have the peace that we have had in the past to ensure that there is livelihood okay. and the people are not going to suffer. Okay. Thank you. So then I give a honorable member for Ndiwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, let me thank uh, Honorable Koinange for a very effective reply. I heard so many positive things, like arraignment has been done in court and all that. But Mr. Speaker, in his statement, there was also another disturbing statement that the people 
the public could not allow the police to access. That simply means that uh, there's a disconnect between Nyumbakumi, which I think is good initiative, Mr. Speaker, so that we can get information and also what is going on. And I want to tie that also with the disappearance that Honorable Watch was talking about. Uh, Nyumbakumi was supposed to know each and every body in the house. Uh, and if they disappear, that information can be got very, very quickly. But let me make this general statement, Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, that uh, so many people are dying in the hands of the of police. And what we have, which is overriding, is investigation is open, inquest is open, no, no statement or the DCI is reviewing all this. I think it gets back to police reforms, which we have been talking about all the time. Okay. Especially, Mr. Speaker, in the era of mental health. If you interdict 2,000 people, that's not a solution. Where are they? They could be killing even more. So I think we, uh, the department need to look into that seriously. Okay. Maybe the last one, Honorable Pukose, uh, in brief, and then we make progress. We make progress because we are actually running short of time. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I want to thank the Honorable Koinange, Chair of uh, National Security, for the responses that is responded. Honorable Speaker, uh, issues of uh, people being killed and even others disappearing and not being found are cases that are reported here and there, Honorable Speaker. And I think when somebody disappears completely, it is not possible that that person just disappeared. I think, uh, Honorable Speaker, the national, uh, the NSIS, have all information in all corners, and they should be working hand in hand with the DCI to make sure that nobody completely disappears and not be found. We've seen cases of people even being murdered and people being uh, hidden somewhere, but at the end of the day, these people are found. So it is very unfortunate that it is reported that this person uh, has never been found. It cannot be possible because somebody cannot melt into thin air. Somebody cannot just disappear like that. A case also in my constituency, Honorable Speaker, of recently, which was reported at Endebase Police Station, of a young child of 12 years from Mubere disappearing. And up to date, that child has not been found. So I think it is important that our police officers and even the informers should be able to work in hand to make sure that we are able to trace those kinds of people. So with those few remarks, Honorable Speaker, okay. thank you. Though, though, of course, uh, I would not be expecting the chair, uh, administration and national security to be, uh, as, you, as, as I give you an opportunity, I would not be expecting you to go to the details of what members are asking you about their constituencies, because if, if they have uh, issues like those ones, they can as well uh, request their own statements or questions. So you will only deal with the specific ones that you are handling it. But what is your point of order, the, the Honorable Wandai? Mr. Speaker, uh, whereas I appreciate uh, the importance of question and statements and the discourse that is ensuing, I've had difficulty, Mr. Speaker, because in a special sitting of the House, such as this one, I'd rather we focus on the issues Agreed. that brought us and, yes. and yes. perhaps that, suggest that, 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 that we limit. That, limit. Makes, that makes a lot of sense. Y yes. That definitely makes a lot of sense. Y yeah, but you see, in, uh, the, the, the questions uh, were brought in, and the, you know, we are also trying to uh, process as, as quick as possible the questions members and statements are asking. And this was a good one. Mr. So, Speaker, they can, but, be, but, they can, but, they can but, be tabled. But, but henceforth, and yes. we will be moving quickly. They can so be right now, I'm giving no other member, because I see also that is the interest of the House. So, Chair, please respond briefly. And then we probably will move very fast to the matter in question that yes. was uh, thank you honorable speaker meeting. and of course i i can i i realize that uh, members are very concerned about the police officers but uh, honorable speaker uh, globally everywhere a uh, police issue is a very is a very sensitive issue and we realize the problem is uh, in many countries 
a lot of training, then the police usually behave the way they are supposed to behave. But where there is no more training, enough training is a problem. And the Honorable Speaker, very soon, as a committee, we are going to recommend that all the police officers in Kenya should go back to school from time to time so they become disciplined people and to be able to serve the people. Honorable Speaker, um, also my brother was uh, also talking about uh, the issue of um, information. This is there. But Honorable Speaker, I believe Nyumbakumi will be the most effective to help the people on the ground. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Very well. And again, I really congratulate you and your committee for the work well done on this particular one, really. So then there would have been the one by the chairperson trade uh, industry and cooperatives the, on the issue of uh, the free trade area between Kenya and USA. Can it wait? Or would you want to proceed quick, uh, in brief? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. And I would beseech members to listen to this uh, statement because it's a progress report on um, it's a statement on the Kenya-United uh, States of America bilateral free trade agreement and negotiations. Mr. Speaker, Article 201 of the Constitution states that there shall be openness and accountability, including public participation in financial matters. It is on this account that I rise to inform and update this August House as a people's representative on the status of the Kenya-US free trade area or free trade agreement negotiations. Mr. Speaker, this House may recall that on uh, 27th August 2018, His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta led a delegation to the United States at the invitation of President Donald Trump. During the meeting between their Excellencies, President Uhuru Kenyatta and Donald Trump, Kenya and United States elevated their relationship to a strategic partnership, which in international relations, RIAM, it encompasses cooperation in defense and security, economic cooperation, connectivity, counterterrorism, and cooperation on global issues. Mr. Speaker, in this regard, the strategic partnership agreed by the two presidents, which mirror the current understanding of a strategic partnership, provides for long-term prospects of cooperation in trade and investment, rather than short-term solution. It is organized around the following four thematic pillars. One, economic prosperity, trade and investment. Two, defense cooperation. Three, democracy, governance and uh, civilian security. And four, multilateral and regional issues. In addition, Mr. Speaker, in August 2018, the two presidents established the US-Kenya Trade Investment Working Group, TIWG, to explore ways to deepen economic ties between the two countries and lay the groundwork for a stronger future trade relationship. Mr. Speaker, to date, the TIWG has held three meetings which have alternated between Nairobi and Washington, D.C., and are the objectives, and these are the objectives of TIWG. One, maximizing on the availability, on the available opportunity in the remaining five years of the African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, and thus create certainty. Two, strengthening commercial cooperation between the two countries. Three, development of short-term solutions to reduce barriers to trade and investment. And four, exploratory talks on future Kenya-US bilateral trade and investment relations. Mr. Speaker, on 6th February 2020, the two presidents held a meeting in Washington, D.C., and has announced their intention to negotiate a free trade agreement. This paved the way for the move from exploratory talks to actual negotiations on bilateral free trade agreement. The preparations towards commencement of the negotiations started in earnest after the February 2020 meeting in Washington, D.C., and which has culminated into the virtual launch of negotiations which were held on the 8th July 2020, that is last week on Wednesday. Mr. Speaker, in March 2020, 
The Cabinet Secretary, Industry, Trade and Enterprise Development, shared a status brief on the proposed Kenya-US free trade agreement with, of course, my committee and also the then leader of majority in the House. Mr. Speaker, on the 17th of June 2020, at the invitation of His Excellency Ambassador Kale Makata, the United, Ambassador, United States Ambassador to Kenya, I led a delegation of the Trade Committee where we discussed the opportunities of the free trade agreement. During the discussions, we noted that the free trade agreement, or FTA, will create certainty for current business under AGOA, as well as attract long-term investment that will help create and protect jobs. Further, Mr. Speaker, on 17th March 2020, the President of the United States, through his trade representative, Robert Reitziger, informed the Congress of his intention to initiate negotiations on the trade agreement with the Republic of Kenya. So in the United States, they did it in March. What is the status of the relationship between Kenya and US? Mr. Speaker, the United States and Kenya have enjoyed strong and deep-rooted diplomatic and trade relations for more than 50 years. US is... Honorable Junet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, will I be in order through you to request the Chair of Trade and uh, Cooperatives to summarize his statement in, in a manner that, uh, that we take the, uh, uh, actually, the best interest? Uh, looking at it, as I agree with you, I think he was actually ending his... Uh, yeah, Mr. Speaker, and it is critical. It's very, very important. And I started by saying that this is one of the very, very critical process because negotiations are going on between Kenya and US. And it is the first in Sub-Saharan Africa. So I would want members also, as I also try to summarize, to note that, to note and clearly know what it means that now we will be transiting from Agoa to a free trade area, an agreement which is critical to us. So Mr. I, Speaker. I see quite a lot of issues, wouldn't we? What is it, Honorable Duale? Again, it's not. Thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, back, and I'm happy. I'm happy, uh, Parliament and its wisdom, and I want to thank the speaker and the rest of the team for giving me a chair that uh, has written ranking member. So that in the event, in the event uh, next Parliament you don't become a, a deputy speaker or a speaker, you'll also be given a ranking seat. This is a tradition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I think as, as I allow the, the chair to finish, under the Ratification Act, this agreement ultimately will come to this house. It will come to this house. And uh, it will be subjected to either uh, Committee on Defense or on Trade. And the same agreement will be subjected to the US Congress. So I think now we are at the initial stage. It's something that we are all happy about it. But I'm sure the answer so far given by the chair is enough. Uh, but I think let's wait. And I still want to go back to what Honorable Wandai said. You know, a special sitting is gazetted. And the items for discussion are in the gazette notice. So I think, uh, Chair, as much as, uh, as you go further, yes, that's, that's, uh, I think uh, we, should, we, should, we should give more time okay. to the issues that brought us back. That's fine. Again, with the numbers that are rising in the COVID-19, some of us just came for those specific business so that we can go back and save our families. OK. Well, uh, much as members would want to insist that it is what was gazetted, there are also preliminaries that you normally don't dispense with. So, but uh, Honorable Kadini Kega, I think you can see the mood. We, yep. could, we could as well summarize, table the report, then those members who have time sufficient to to go through yeah, that th thank, you, thank you, thank uh, you, Speaker. And I start guided. It's not a report that we are tabling. It's just to inform the House what is actually happening, because you have seen even cases being taken to East African Court and all that, just to appraise the members. But know that the negotiations are going on. No conclusions have been made. But this is something that is good for the country. I beg to submit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Kanini Kega. Honorable members, that's an extremely critical. A report really is critical. It's the business of members to know what is happening. 
and especially on an issue like that one, which is of interest. So we'll go to the next order. And members, be prepared now. I think what you wanted to get into, we will get into shortly. Order number eight, procedural motion, reduction of publication period for a specified bill. I would lead our majority proceed and uh, in the spirit of summary, it was fairly straightforward, and then we hit the road on what... Yes, Mr. Actually. Speaker, I beg to move the following procedural motion. That notwithstanding the provisions of starting order number 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the Public Finance Management Amendment Number 2 Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 23 of 2020, from 14 days to 6 days. Mr. Speaker, this, you may recall, this House had already provided within the procedural motion before adjournment that any bill that comes should be referred to the committees and be processed. Uh, but now that we are here, I would like to just urge that we reduce this from 14 days to six days so they can go to the committee. It's already been advertised for public participation and that's ongoing. And I also want to urge members to take special interest in this bill uh, because it will unlock uh, one of the biggest barriers that our medium and small enterprises have in accessing credit, especially during these times uh, of COVID. And uh, it, it will be part of uh, the legal frameworks that will enable uh, part of President Uhuru Kenyatta's stimulus package, especially to our young traders to access credit. So I would like to ask members to take an interest in it and the committee to then uh, also process it within the, uh, the, 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 so that by the time we come back, we'll be ready to take it through second reading and hopefully third reading and fast track it that our people can be able to access credit as soon as possible. Okay. So Mr. Speaker, this is a very straightforward matter and I urge uh, the House to support this procedure motion. We cut the time and uh, to uh, for facilitate its uh, fast tracking. And I wish to uh, uh, beg to move and request the Honorable uh, John Buddy uh, to second. Honorable Leader of Minority Party. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is just a procedural motion. I second. Very well. So I propose a question, which is that notwithstanding the provisions of Standing Order 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the Finance Management Amendment Bill Number 2, Bill National Assembly Bill Number 23 of 2020, from 14 to 6 days. I put the question, which is that notwithstanding the provisions of Standing Order 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the Public Finance Management Amendment Number 2, Bill National Assembly Bill Number 23 of 2020 from 14 to six days. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Many as of our contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Next order. Order number nine, the Public Finance Management Amendment number two bill, National Assembly bill number 23 of 2020, first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to amend the Public Finance Management Act 2020 and for connected purposes. Order number 10, motion, appointment of members to specified committees. Leader, majority party. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that further to the resolution of the House of Tuesday, uh, 5th of December 2017, uh, appointing members into various committees and pursuant to the provisions of studying order number 173, this House further approves the appointment of the following members to the respective committees as specified on the order paper on pages 858 to 875 of order paper number 044 uh, for, for purpose of the record. I don't intend to read all the names uh, because members have read. It's been, uh, it was uploaded uh, onto the website and uh, every member knows their name and they can allocate where they are. Mr. Speaker, this list was approved through the selection committee on Monday the 13th uh, for submission uh, to the House. And the overall objective of this reorganization of the committees is really the better performance of, of committees and also to align the synergies of the members with the visions 
of the uh, party leaderships. Uh, special considerations that have been put in place include some regional spread of these names uh, to the extent possible. The, we've also, in looking at the changes, I just want to alert members that the attendance reports have been reviewed. There was a report that was done of up to October of last year, and uh, that has led to some changes for members who have not been attending at least 25% of the time. You might find that uh, you'll be given more time to attend to other issues that have been keeping you away from attending committee. Um, the, we've also, the list has been reviewed to ensure compliance with the studying orders and our secretariat has been very thorough on that to ensure at least every member has uh, been assigned one committee. Uh, the only three members who don't have a committee uh, for specific reasons, the member for, uh, member Honorable Musimba at his special request, uh, the Honorable Waluke, special circumstances, and the, uh, as we all know, Musambweni constituency, there is no member. So everyone else has at least one committee uh, so that they exercise their oversight. The exercise has also looked at the party allocation. There's 622 slots available and they are spread within the parties and that has also been looked into. I also want to alert members because I know I've received so many phone calls. Uh, members saying, oh, I've been put in a lesser committee. I wanted to be in a bigger committee. All committees are created by this house. And this house, uh, in its wisdom, has decided that every committee is as important as any other. So whether you find yourself in uh, you know, one committee that you consider small or one that you consider big, let us first of all recognize the fact that all these committees are creations of this house. And uh, I, so nobody needs to feel that uh, they are in a lesser or a bigger committee, we are being called to serve and provide oversight within those, because somebody has to serve in that committee. Uh, some genuine concerns have also been raised after the publication of the report, and uh, particularly, I know, uh, I don't know whether the member for Belgut is here, he's uh, uh, raised an issue that we had uh, overlooked, and for any of those members who perhaps feel that uh, the, where they've been put, they may not be able to be productive because they might have conflict or something. We will be looking at that within the next uh, couple of weeks with the whips, and we'll see whether we can uh, rectify. Uh, uh, again, let me just uh, emphasize that these changes, uh, because as you look, you'll see some, there's a chairman, there's a or vice chairman, but no chairman. Uh, these changes that we'll be approving today will result in 29 vacancies uh, at different levels of leadership, both in the chair and vice chair. Uh, because obviously when you move your constituency, you cannot then uh, move with the position you've been having. Or uh, some may be moving for, uh, uh, to seek election in those new constituencies. And uh, which means there'll be elections for 29 positions. Now, Obviously, we can't talk about elections before we approve the voters' register, in quotes. And uh, hence, uh, in the afternoon, after today, we expect the speaker will be providing us communication on when the elections will take place and the modalities of those elections uh, this afternoon. And I will also be sharing with the House uh, the proposals that have been received from the party leadership on the preferred, the proposed candidates. Uh, so that uh, uh, in terms of who the party leaderships uh, would propose to, to chair or be the deputies in the respective committees. And hence, uh, before uh, members who may have some uh, uh, leadership, committee leadership ambitions, before you, embark on a tedious campaign, uh, especially in these uh, times of COVID, uh, it, would be, it would be wise uh, to consult with your whip uh, 
because you could end up with a elaborate campaign only to find that perhaps your party has already uh, proposed a, a different candidate. Uh, no, I'm not saying in any case uh, that uh, members I, are at liberty. I, I can't see any member. I, I hear a shout, but I see no member who has placed um, the, that intervention bit. But, but uh, what, 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 the, what, what, what the leader majority is basically saying, don't spend your resources if you know it is not going to be valid exactly. at the end of the day. So, Thank I mean, you. Thank what, you. Is wrong, Thank what is wrong with that? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think, I think I'm, only, I'm only advising members that uh, you know, elections can be very expensive and divisive, and uh, the results may not be quite uh, what you expect. So let's, let's take advice from your respective whips. Uh, they will guide you in terms of whether you are a viable candidate or whether they have an alternative candidate before you embark on that process. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as, as we go through this membership, I am also inclined to remind members is that... Is member uh, is very ag agitated back there. Is that Bashir? Bashir, what is it, Honorable Bashir? What is it? It is very difficult to locate you there. 64, thank you. You know your name uh, is, is Bashir, but here it is written Abdallah Sheikh. Now, all of them are yours anyway. The right title is the Honorable Major, don't forget. The Honorable can, 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 be, can be deleted, but Major will have to remain. Uh, Honorable Speaker, Actually, it's the other way around. You should be saying, <laughs> Major, you can mention it yourself, but Honorable, you allow others okay. to, to ascribe to you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I hear the, the able major leader saying that uh, he's waiting lists from uh, yes, put on your, uh, put from your the party properly. and the party leaders. So uh, is he insinuating that we are going to have a selection and not elections in the committees? No, he did not suggest that uh, as far as I can hear from here. Thank you. He only advised members to be careful before they embark on rigors <laughs> of a campaign. I mean, and it was fairly straightforward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, I, 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 like I said, I'm convinced that perhaps members require this reminder that uh, if you look at the statistics as being released by the Ministry of Health, we are moving into a dangerous zone as far as COVID uh, the pandemic is uh, shaping up within this country. And uh, the numbers on the rise is getting into the community face. And as members of parliament, we may have our immunity in terms of speeches made on the floor of this house. But we certainly don't have immunity from COVID, and even within our interactions within here. And I would want to ask members that whether you have been tested and you are negative, the fact that you tested yesterday negative does not mean you cannot get infected today. Because I think some people have heard that false sense of security, that because I've been tested, now I can interact. Uh, it's, uh, I want to ask members, especially in the House, uh, and as we embark on looking for votes in the committees, let's remember the basics on social distancing, the masks, and basically, I expect members are all maintaining their hygiene anyway. So, not just in the House, but also within our interaction with members of the public. Remember, it's now at the community phase. It's, the numbers have moved, and uh, it's, it's not getting better. So let us protect ourselves, Kenyans need us, uh, to help them uh, in the task they gave us. I just want to de-emphasize that so that we, uh, as we go forward, we, we also uh, take care. Uh, Mr. Speaker, again, this list, uh, as guided by the Speaker, must be approved as it is. Uh, there cannot be any alteration, not even from us, without having to go back to selection committee. So I urge members that we, we don't take so much on it. We process it so that we can move to unlock the speaker's communication in the afternoon. And uh, with those, I beg to move and ask 
the leader of the minority, the Honorable John Buddy, to second. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion as ably moved by uh, my colleague, the leader of the majority. And uh, Mr. Speaker, remember, uh, just before we went on recess, we actually had brought this motion to the House. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, because of um, uh, need for uh, further consultation, which I want to graciously thank uh, the Leader of Majority for accepting to withdraw the list that was uh, tabled that day uh, for further consultation, which we have ably conducted amongst ourselves, uh, that um, today what we are doing is to give to this House the full details, the list of all members in all committees. We have here 15 departmental committees. We have four financial uh, audit and money related committees and 12 other committees. We have tried as much as possible to make sure that at least every member uh, falls in at least one committee. If there is any oversight, Mr. Speaker, we can still deal with it. Nothing, no work done by human being would ever be perfect. And I think we have tried as much as possible. The whips, our two whips, both the Honorable Wangwe and Honorable Junet Mohammed have done, in my view, uh, very splendid work, and uh, which is very encouraging. Mr. Speaker, there are certain changes which you have made because this is actually midterm. It's like a midterm of the life of this parliament, and we have made midterm changes. And we had indicated previously that we look at uh, even attendance of members in various committees to look at your enthusiasm and uh, uh, how you value the work in that committee. And we have also assessed other members who probably for the past two years plus have not been fairly treated. But Mr. Speaker, I'm happy that we have members who are going to give their all to these committees. I'm particularly concerned about the Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs, which is going to have a heavy calendar and a heavy workload ahead of them. We have new members in that committee, about eight new members in this committee. Uh, Sarah Correre, Gideon, no, sorry, uh, the, uh, not eight members, I'm reading the wrong one. Uh, we have about seven new members in that committee. The Honorable Emmanuel Wangwe, who is the whip on majority side, and also the Honorable Junet Mohammed, the whip from uh, the minority side. This is basically because you know the whips bring order. This is a committee where we need serious order going forward. You know what we expect. The BBI report is going to come. And a lot of it is going to be dealt with in this house. And so we expect the two whips to work with the chair and the vice chair to really bring order in terms of legislation. We have Antonio Luoch, who is a, a, a known lawyer. We have Paul Utiende Amolu who is a very serious lawyer in this country and hopefully uh, is going to deputize the chair of the committee who is likely to be Muturi Kigano, uh, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and then we also have Josephine Lesuda, who is a very <laughs> serious lady, I know, uh, and Robert Gichimu. Mr. Speaker, Minority, this... le minority leader, would, wouldn't you kindly have uh, allowed the matter to go through the, this phase? before you now give the preferences. I've just talked of likely, Mr. Speaker, and hopefully. And uh, you can't, uh, I cannot be stopped from being hopeful and uh, expecting. Uh, you know, likelihood of something can happen, it may not happen. But Mr. Speaker, let me uh, wind up my contribution to this motion uh, that uh, what the leader of majority had suggested is, yes, there is democracy. But Mr. Speaker, we are a parliamentary party democracy. And uh, we are here with a lot of contribution from our parliamentary parties. That is why the parties were allowed to make suggestions and recommendations on who sits where. And that was adopted by the selection committee. The same same parties have also expressed the desires on the leadership of these committees. I expect the Jubilee side to propose uh, some members to chair and vice chairs, the majority of the committees actually, but also from our side, Mr. Speaker, minority side, and I want to thank the majority side for allowing our side to express interest 
in um, a couple of committees, uh, to chair about four committees and vice chair of about other four committees. That is the spirit of handshake, the spirit of working together as a nation, the spirit, the spirit of bringing this country together. I know as I wind up, Mr. Speaker, that there's been a lot of reporting of disagreements between the majority side and minority side. The disagreements between Honorable Kemonya, the majority leader, and Honorable Mbadi, the minority leader. First of all, these people who are talking, the way they are talking, do not know that Honorable Kemonya and I have a long history in the profession. We hardly could, can disagree. What we did the other time was to agree to consult further. And I'm happy that that consultation has borne fruit. And now everybody, uh, we are all, both of us are speaking the same language. And Mr. Speaker, uh, that is exactly the spirit with which both majority and minority are going to conduct business in this house. If we need further consultation, we will always consult and agree. And when we agree, we agree. And Mr. Speaker, those who are those who wish or would wish that uh, the handshake would break up, I would tell them that they will wait for a very long time. I don't know when it will ever uh, break up, but we are in this together. There were two leaders meant business when they shook hands on 9th of March. It was not a child's play. And what we are going to do as the two leaders in this house, who actually represented them, Mr. Speaker, it should have been Uhuru Kenyatta sitting there and Raila Odinga sitting here if we were in a, a parliamentary system. Uh, but uh, you see, we are where we are. And so we are here courtesy of them. So what we are going to do in this house is going to reflect on what is happening outside there. And uh, you can take my word on that and you can take it to the bank. We have take, given I, everybody I, committees. I can, take, I can take your word on anything else, but not where they were supposed to be sitting because they would be much closer here. They would be sitting next here and the other one there. You, you are sitting still I'm be that supposing, one. you know, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, today you, you, you don't want me to exercise my democratic <laughs> right to speak freely. But, but, Mr. Speaker, we have given committees to everybody, including Uchie, Mr. Speaker, who probably thought a few days ago that we'd leave him without a committee. As to whether a committee is big or small, it's your own judgment and your own assessment, and you cannot force your assessment on us. As far as I'm concerned, these committees are the same. In fact, there is a committee, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Speaker, who a few, in the last parliament, I will not mention which is this committee. No one wanted that committee. But this time, Mr. Speaker, uh, we, are, we attempted to remove uh, one member from that committee to another. Uh, the, Mr. Speaker, it was not easy. We had to return that member there. The chairman who has gone to that committee has made the committee vibrant. I'm sure those of us who follow know what the committee I'm referring to. And the, that chairman has the tendency of wherever he goes to a committee, makes it very vibrant. Uh, there's even another committee, which now is probably the, pre the number one preferred committee. In uh, the 10th parliament, I didn't see the kind of interest I see in it. But when he chaired it in the last parliament, it became so important, I don't know how. So all this committee depends on the leadership of the committees, depends on the members of the committee. Please get to this committee and execute, discharge your functions. Mr. Speaker, I second. Okay, honorable members, I propose the question that further to the resolution of the House on Tuesday, 5th December 2017, appointing members into various committees and pursuant to provisions of Standing Order 173, this House further approves the appointment of the following members to the respective committees as specified in the order paper. Uh, le le let us have um, a, a few members. We, we will start with the Honorable... Now I'm following um, the order here and we'll start with Honorable Amolo. Honorable Dr. Atienda Amolo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second and support this uh, motion. Mr. Speaker, first of all, it should be noted, as some member raised a point of order, that in the wisdom of this House, in Standing Order Number 173, it encourages the selection panel to consult with the parliamentary parties. 
So, Mr. Speaker, there is nothing inconsistent either with our standing orders or the constitution in the selection panel, you know, consulting with the parliamentary party. Secondly, it is true, I think uh, the leader of majority mentioned, that um, this list once presented gives us very little room. Either we adopt it or we reject it. Because that, those are the words of the standing orders, uh, 175-2. That is the ruling that the speaker has made severally. Speaking for myself, Mr. Speaker, I think it is also consistent with this special sitting because in our last sitting, we had, had, we had extended the time by 30 days and we are still within the 30 days. I am honored if this list is approved to join my distinguished colleagues in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee. I see a lot of distinguished members there. I had always wanted to serve and speaking for myself and in the interest of time, I second this and I commit to serve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, you definitely were not seconding. Not uh, seconding. I support. I support, support the motion, Mr. Speaker. So we go to Honorable uh, Duale. I'm surprised you put your uh, top on the list. This is uh, real activity at the back bay. Well, from my records here, it is him who is ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker, because I have to get used to the new environment. The speaker, I, as, as I support uh, this list, First, I want to thank both the leader of majority and the minority, because in my old uh, position, this is one of the most difficult things that the whips and the leader of majority go through, uh, combining and compiling uh, committee list to members. But let me not dwell on that. Let me dwell on the importance of committees. Committees are vital tool and organ for any legislative procedure and processes. Without having an effective and efficient committees, then the plenary will have no business. That must come out very, very clearly. Whether it is the processing of bills, either government or private members' bills, whether it is dealing with the petitions, whether it is dealing with statements and questions under the presidential uh, system of government, uh, of governance. Second and more important, it's committees that conduct a fundamental constitutional obligation known as public participation. So committees do review legislative proposals that are brought to this house. Committees scrutinize the governance activity, the policies, the trade, uh, agreements and all ratifications. Committees uh, deal with uh, the, the investigation and special issues like public accounts committee and public investment. Committees like appointment, they deal with the vetting and approval of executive appointments. And finally, committees provide a platform for public participation in the execution of the specific items. And all committees uh, in my opinion, and Mr. Speaker, you know uh, Honorable Kimonya, uh, because he's learning the ropes, there are certain things that uh, party leaders give instruction that you don't say it on the floor of the house. It might in a way contradict the standing orders. You know, yeah, there are things that you do uh, uh, administratively in-house in your offices. Because uh, when we are here, we are guided by the signing orders. And I want to make it very clear. Now, the House has given you 30 days. In fact, the standing orders are very clear that elections should have taken place within seven days. But because the House overrode the standing orders and gave you 30 days, I think from the time when we got the 30 days, the few days which are remaining must be enough for committees to conduct elections. The speaker. The other thing I, I really want to raise, and I'm sure, you know, in future I think even the clerk's office uh, should put the order paper the way we are used to, you know, 24 hours. Now that I have enough time, you know, I wanted to study the order paper, look at it in compliance with the standing orders. But I'm sure that I hold a PhD, I do this, I do this. That is not important. I think when you walk into, and because we have a presidential system of government, uh, system of, of governance, if you, go to, if you go to the Congress, if you go to the U.S. Senate, if you go to the House of Commons, 
There are specific name tags. You don't put the name tag. The moment a member arrives and takes his seat, the clerk of that committee is supposed to put a name tag on that so that the person you're interrogating can say that uh, the person asking me the question is Honorable Junette. The person asking me. So, Mr. Speaker, I think as we move on, in my conclusion, I say the functions of committees are critical to this House. Uh, committees must be effective. Committees must be efficient. To become a chair or a vice chair is a privilege that the House gives you. And you must not abuse that privilege. You must not go to bed with the people you oversight. You must, there must be a distance, there must be a space between the departments, the agencies, and the ministries that you oversight. There must be consultation and concurrence with those agencies. But when it comes to uh, really issues of oversight, you must be ready to uh, uh, say this is wrong and this is right. Okay. The speaker, uh, with those many remarks, I again want to thank you very, very much for according me a specific seat with a ranking member. Again, I become the first ranking member in the House, and I want to thank the House Business Committee, the you, clerk's office, and everybody for that uh, respect you, you, and you for that the, position. You ask the leader of majority not thank to you. divide too much. You are already doing it yourself. Now, thank let's you. have a... Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. We, we, we will have uh, the Honorable Member, and please kindly, if we can con contribute in brief, sure. then we can be able to give as many sure. papers as possible. Yes. I know I have not even considered gender. Unfortunately, they are not top here, but I'm going to look at it now. So proceed. Mr. Speaker, thank you for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this. Mr. Speaker, first I want to support the motion. Mr. Speaker, I know every member will want to serve in certain committees maybe due to his expertise or our expertise or other things. But Mr. Speaker, if you put all your efforts in any committee, you will get good results, Mr. Speaker, as a member. That's the bottom line, Mr. Speaker. Any committee, from the experience I have in this house, if you are taken to any committee and you put your bet, I wanted to say something about the former majority leader is leaving. Mr. Speaker, I have nothing to add because the majority leader has spoken, the former majority leader has spoken. And I can see the former majority leader can do better as a backbencher than where he was, Mr. Speaker. Today, <laughs> the kind of contribution he has made to this House, Mr. Speaker, are very, very good, Mr. Speaker. I didn't know that sometimes being in the back can be of nice value like the way he has done. But Mr. Speaker, having said that, Mr. Speaker, I have received as a whip many messages from members asking for this committee and that committee. But the only one that shocked me was some of them sent me a message telling me Please kindly put me in a lucrative uh, committee. I have the messages in my phone, so I don't know which one is lucrative and which one I'm still investigating. But Mr. Speaker, having <laughs> said that, every, every committee, Mr. Speaker, in this house is as important as the other. I have never doubted the capacity of Honorable Ichungo. He's one of the best members of parliament in this house, Mr. Speaker, having served with him now in two terms and as the chair. And I know he will serve very well in the Committee of Member Services, the Catering Committee, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. No, Speaker... No, 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 Honorable... We, we, are <laughs> we, we do not have a Catering Committee in the standing order. <laughs> members, member Services we and Facilities, we, Mr. We, Speaker. <laughs> members, Services and Facilities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, now we are under Corona, there are no services being provided. But when we return back to normal, Normalcy after COVID, Mr. Speaker. If the quality of my tea and my mandasi goes See, down, I will only blame Honorable Ishungo and nobody, Mr. Speaker. What is your point he has to that? take responsibility, Mr. Na, na, Speaker, actually, for my you, tea. You mentioned him, so I have no choice but to give him an. So, what, what is your point about the Honorable Ishungo? I can't see one, I only see 126 here. <laughs> what are okay, le, le, I, I can't see the 125. There must be a problem somewhere. No, just use that one next. I don't know what you will do with Honorable Kamurin. Well, uh, well, it will be redone after you leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable Speaker. And uh, I actually rose on a point of information, and I'm glad that no, the Honorable no, if it is a point of my, Minority Hip was gracious enough to accept the information that indeed. There are member services being offered even today. Member services that does not need, does not mean catering. I know having come from where he comes from, catering is very important. But member services, Honorable Junette, includes you being facilitated to be in this house this morning. 
amidst this pandemic. And I want to assure you, Honorable Junet, I will make sure that you are properly facilitated. Even the deputy leader of minority, Mze Baba of the House, Mze Nuru Angwenyi, Mze Maina Commander, we will ensure whether it is virtually or physically, they are properly facilitated to be able to transact business on behalf of their members. Uh, well, uh, you, you sneaked in and uh, tried to give information when I thought you were rising on a point of order. But proceed and finalize. Uh, Thank you, uh, yeah, Mr. Speaker. I want, to, I want to thank him for the good information he has given me and for taking up the job with Gaston, Mr. Speaker. I knew his capacity. He might have been, he even runs butcheries in Kikuyu, I know, Mr. Speaker. So I know that is a good job he can do. But finally, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to add. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge members to pass this list as it is. We have tried as best as possible to place members in different committees. Please, and this is not final. This is not conclusive, Mr. Speaker. In case of any changes required going forward, Mr. Speaker, we are going to make sure as whips, we listen to members, we will change all we can. Where if somebody is not, com if a member is not comfortable in a certain committee, our offices are open to listen to Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, finally, as the leader of majority has alluded to, after this list has passed, we will have elections for different committees, Mr. Speaker. For those who are from my side in the NASA coalition, please don't start campaign. Please consult me. I might be having information that you don't have, that I want to share with you. Don't waste your money, as the leader has said. Before we start campaign, let's have a small meeting in my office. We agree. We, have been, we are going to contest in seven or so positions. Let us agree and consensus, because if you go against my... Against my directions, the consequences will be dire. I'm going to de-whip you thoroughly, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, uh, let's have Honorable Metito. Honorable Metito. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion. And first, let me also take this opportunity to thank the leadership of both sides of the House, the leader of majority and majority whip, and the minority leader and minority whip, Mr. Speaker, uh, like the former majority leader, in the last parliament, I was the majority whip in this house. And I can uh, attest that um, this is not an easy work, Mr. Speaker. So I want to very sincerely thank uh, those leaders who have sat down and tried to uh, balance all this. Because what the leaders are saying, that uh, they are receiving requests very many of them, that is very true. And, and, and actually trying to satisfy uh, the interests of each member uh, is not easy. Mr. Speaker, but having said that, Mr. Speaker, this is the first time I've been uh, in four parliaments, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And Mr. Speaker, this is the first time we are doing um, almost an overhaul of these committees, especially departmental committees. Uh, mid-term, Mr. Speaker. It has advantages, it has disadvantages, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I had uh, the, major, the, the minority whip alluding to the fact that um, this, may, this may not be the final. They will still listen to the interest of members and further changes may come as we go forward, Mr. Speaker. But, but I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that uh, at times, it is so good to have consistencies in these committees, Mr. Speaker. Because as it has been said by the previous speakers, committees are as good as the leadership of those committees, Mr. Speaker. And, and at times, you try to build up um, a, a consensus, you know, bonding, trying to understand each other, a bipartisan uh, committee work, Mr. Speaker. And then, um, you get disruption in the, in the course of the, of, of the work, Mr. Speaker, by changing committees, and it will not be easy again, Mr. Speaker. Like, I've been looking at this list, and you see some committees, not less than actually five, and I'm talking of departmental committees, you see some committees that have had changes to as much as about half of the membership of the committee, Mr. Speaker. I think the most affected one is, if you look at the public accounts committee, which has been ably led by the Honorable Pio and I, and many times on the floor of this house, we have appreciated the work he has done in trying to bring the audited uh, account of, of government 
to date Mr. Speaker, but if you look at that committee, I can see there are nine new members. Nine out of 19, Mr. Speaker, even pick the eight. Uh, if you go to transport six, uh, trade eight, and the like, Mr. Speaker, and these committees are 19 in number, in terms of membership, Mr. Speaker, of our committee. So I think bringing about, you know, half or more than even half of, of, of the members as new members, Mr. Speaker, it may mean that starting the work from scratch, Mr. Speaker. But nevertheless, uh, I still want to thank the leadership because I know leadership of both, both sides. They have done a lot of consultation. Personally, as the Chair of Defense and Foreign Relations, Mr. Speaker, I've received, um, I've, been, I've been asking many questions by both sides, the leadership of both sides, especially in asking about the performance and attendance of, of, of the members of these committees, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I, that is a very good gesture, Mr. Speaker, to the leadership of the House. Again, it's also good to check the issue of putting one member to about three committees, Mr. Speaker, because I've seen the list and there are members, many of them, who are in more than two committees even, to, to, to more than two. And Mr. Speaker, for those who have been here before, they know very well that we are heading to a very critical time in this house because as we near to the tail end of, 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 of this house uh, towards election, Mr. Speaker, members will be very busy on the ground trying to campaign for re-election. And that will leave many committees without quorum and that may bring the work of committees to a halt, Mr. Speaker. So therefore, if you are put into three committees, and then you may even end up being just a member to get in, sign to this committee. You are called, give us quorum. Then you go to another committee, give us quorum. And, and if you do that, Mr. Speaker, you will not be doing justice to, to, to both the committee and even to this nation in terms of oversight, Mr. Speaker. Okay. And therefore, uh, I want to end uh, because of time and say I support. Yes, I'm trying to see if many members can speak to it, even if it is a few minutes each. Like for example, let's have Pamela, the Honorable Pamela, member for. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Members, we will share. Please, I, I, the, the, the interest is so high. I have to balance. I rise to support the motion, Mr. Speaker. But uh, I think mine will be very brief. I just wanted to um, say that much as consistency is very important, uh, I don't agree with uh, what my honorable member has just said a few minutes ago, that uh, bringing in new members in certain committees will destroy making uh, people start at zero. I think in every committee, if you look at that list carefully, there would be members who have been there and they can carry the memory of what has been going on. Secondly, I think rotating all the members in all these committees may just add value to all of us by giving us experience to work with the very various departments and various institutions in this country. And so I really think that the idea of moving one member to another committee is not bad as such. It should be important. However, I think I concur with the point that some of the members happen to have very many committees, three or four, and yet others have one. I think I would want to encourage the leadership of the House, even as we talk of the changes that are yet to be made, to be sincere and very fair to all the members so that we can serve this nation in our various capacities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support. Honorable Serem. Ah, you are the other side. Sorry, yeah. this is a confusion of this is a confusion of uh, members sitting in different places. Mm. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm going to give as many members as is possible. So, members, hold on. Uh, you'll get your opportunity. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand to support um, the motion with reservation, Mr. Speaker. I've seen that uh, the whips did a job that, uh, in my view, needs some few corrections, Mr. Speaker. Let me pick up one example, Mr. Speaker. A member of parliament from uh, in uh, Moy, uh, Anab Koy, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Jeb Kut, is in four committees, Mr. Speaker. In the first timer, 
I'm a, I'm a second time in this house, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm in one committee. Let us not use the excuse, Mr. Speaker, that uh, so long as you're in one committee, it's being fair. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I've gone through the list. Quite a number of members in this house are in two, three committees, and the worst are four. Mr. Speaker, to be fair, let us have members be given equal opportunity in this house. We might have difference of opinion, but you cannot punish members on the floor of this house just because have a different opinion on what maybe the, the whips feel about our members, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I served as a vice chair of a committee and understand the consequences of a, a member being a, 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 a chair or a vice chair on the other party, on other committee, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Speaker. So if you are a vice chair or a, or, or a chair and you are in two committees, the other committee will definitely suffer, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. So being in four committees or three committees and other members are in one committee, it's not fair, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so I stand, um, uh, I support the motion with the reservations. Thank you. Okay, then uh, we go to the other side. No, no, we, we'll have to go that direction. Honorable Ishungwa. What is? But let's be brief, honorable members. I'll give now two on this other side as we, we are about to wind up now. Proceed, honorable Ishungwa. Thank you, honorable speaker. And I rise, honorable speaker, to support this motion. But Honorable Speaker, with the reservation that has just been mentioned by the Honorable Serem, that indeed in our, st the, our standing orders, Honorable Speaker, are quite explicit that no member should be appointed to serve in more than two departmental committees, and therefore hope that the two whips, both the minority and majority whips, will act swiftly to correct that anomaly so that we are in compliance with our own standing orders. Honorable Speaker, I must also take this opportunity to thank the Majority Leader, the Majority Whip, and members of the Selections Committee for the opportunity to once again serve in another committee of this House, the Committee of Member Services and Facilities, Honorable Speaker, which was previously referred to as a catering committee. But Honorable Speaker, you will appreciate that with the introduction of the, the, the enactment of the Parliamentary Service Act of 2015, this act, Honorable Speaker, indeed went to the extent of defining what will be member services and facilities. And it says in, in, the, in the act, Honorable Speaker, that services and facilities include all means by which members and staff of parliament are officially assisted to, in performing their parliamentary duty, duties. And that, of course, as I was mentioning, as I informed the Honorable Junette, will include virtual links and virtual sittings especially in this COVID age, Honorable Speaker, to ensure that even our aged members, as I mentioned, like Baba of the House, Honorable Nuru Angwenyi, the Honorable Muturi Kigano, who I've seen here, the Honorable Maina Kamanda, and others, Honorable Speaker, are able to serve their people without being constricted because of the facilities and services that are be off, will be offered by this House. Okay. Honorable Speaker, I want to Please also... Please finalize so that we can save time for others. Yes, Honorable Speaker, I'm, I'm trying to summarize. And I want to draw your reference, Honorable Speaker, to Article 127 of the Constitution, Honorable Speaker, within which, which Honorable Speaker informed the enactment of this Act, the Parliamentary uh, Services Act of 2015. The Act in Article 44, sub Article 3, is quite explicit, Honorable Speaker, and I did, I think the leader of majority did, uh, former leader of majority did, did mention that the Parliamentary Service Commission ought to be oversighted, like all other independent commissions in this country. The Parliamentary Service Commission must and needs to be oversighted. And the committee to oversight the Parliamentary Service Commission is this committee. And Honorable Judith, I want to assure you that I will take this new position with gusto and energy, with passion, to ensure that the Parliamentary Service Commission does its work. Okay. And Honorable Speaker, allow save, me, Honorable save, Speaker, to save, just save, mention 44-3, Honorable save Speaker. the remaining passion for your committee. Honorable Speaker, I was saying uh, Article 44, sub Article 3 is quite explicit that the Commission shall hold by annual sessions with each House of Parliament on the status of implementation of at Article 127, sub Article 6 of the Constitution. And Honorable Speaker, it is important that we then draw 
reference to what Article 127, sub Article 6 uh, mentions about. And it talks about the responsibility of the commission to members, Honorable Speaker. And 127C yes, says that the commission shall undertake singly or jointly with other relevant organizations programs to promote the ideals of parliamentary democracy. And Honorable Speaker, I want to end by saying that in this committee, Honorable Speaker, at this time, when parliamentary democracy in this country and in the world is under threat, I will ensure that the Parliamentary Service Commission reports to both houses and tables reports to show what they are doing towards implementation of Article 127 sub Article 6, and especially in working with other institutions to promote parliamentary democracy. So that in future years, Honorable Speaker, we okay. will not have leaders of a majority right. or the whips telling members a system where under parliamentary democracy, right. members is, ought that, to be that. electing their chairs and vice chairs that they must be guided democracy uh, from other institutions outside of this house. We are destroying parliamentary democracy in this country, Honorable Speaker, and I will want to ensure that in this one year or two years, no, I will work to you, ensure, Honorable you, Speaker, you, that we safeguard our parliamentary democracy. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Don't bother so much with a point of order. Ask for permission for, to speak by for, clicking for, here. For, first and foremost, Mr. Speaker, I rise what, what, to... What is it, Honorable Fatuma? What's your point of order? What's your point of order? She doesn't have even a... What is your point of order? Speaker... It is really unfortunate. The former chair of budget committee, what did he say? Him himself, he was given the chair in the state house. His name was read in the state house. Nobody voted for him. So it is a total dishonesty, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Let us not double stand here. I heard also the majority, former majority leader saying, Mr. Kimunya was also talking about positions. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, we were in state as we were called, and our names was read by Honorable Duale, including Mr. Kimunye, Mr. and Honorable Ishungwe here. So, Mr. Speaker, let us not even delay this debate. Put the question, and we debate this matter, and we finish. We, we actually have only, on, only 15 minutes, so you are okay. You are within, so finalize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and, I, and I hope, Honorable Amalwa, you will be brief. I'm going to be so very that brief. We can have other members speaking. I'm going to be uh, very the, brief. The, the majority will be prepared. You probably will be the last one to speak. Thank when you. When your time comes, so you will have to wait. Thank, yeah. thank you, Mr. Speaker. And then finish. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, arise to support this motion. Mr. Speaker, though there are some anomalies that are there, which Mr. Speaker, we thought should point out, so that correction can be done. I've just spoken to Honorable Junet this morning. He explained to what happened, Mr. Speaker, and I do agree with him, Mr. Speaker. This is a very difficult task in terms of placing people in committees, having worked there. Mr. Speaker, much that people have one committee, there are the members with five committees, Mr. Speaker. When you look at our standing order number 174, it says when you are in a leadership position, Mr. Speaker, you can only have one committee. And there's a member, Mr. Speaker, within five committees. For example, Honorable Selly, Mr. Speaker, is in the Committee of Selection, Committee of Appointments, Committee of Health, and he's also in PAC, and yet he's in leadership. Is this fair, Mr. Speaker? These are five committees. So when we move forward to do that correction, so, that so, normally so, so should so be that, corrected. So that we can dispense with that, um, Honorable Amalua. When you were a, a, a deputy uh, whip yourself, how many committees were I had in? only one committee, Mr. Speaker, because when you're in leadership, be you're entitled to one committee. Mm -hmm. How comes Moshimua Honorable Seli has five committees here? These are the questions you're asking, Mr. Speaker. You, you they know, should be corrected. You, you, you know why, why, much as I do not want to interrupt your contribution. Yes. You know, by virtue of office, yes. he would be in selection no, no, and it's appointment. Not. It's not. It is by that I, I was in that position, Mr. Speaker, and I was only in one committee, in line with the standing order number 174. How comes it's in PAC committee, health committee, appointment committee, selection committee, and yet it's in leadership? Maybe it was an oversight. But the Honorable Junet Mohammed has said he's going to do that correction. So we must look at these things, evaluate things, Mr. Speaker, so that we do things objectively, so that we have equality and equity, Mr. Speaker. Because I was in that position, Mr. Speaker, and if it's to come from the Fort Kenya party, we have other members that can come and serve even better than him. Because he's in leadership, he should only have one committee, Mr. Speaker. This should be corrected. 
I think this was an anomaly. It was an oversight. But Honorable Junet has said he's going to correct this. Thank you, and I support. Very well. Now we go to the Honorable Sankok. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Honorable Speaker, balancing members in different committees is a very difficult task, Honorable Speaker. And uh, I want to congratulate the majority leader, the ma minority leader, the majority whip, and the minority whip for the excellent job that have been done, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, though there may be some little uh, anomalies, Honorable Speaker, uh, I'm sure Honorable Junet and Honorable uh, Wangwe had indicated that they are ready uh, to correct these anomalies. So I urge the members, as a member of the uh, Committee on Selection, I urge the members to support this particular uh, list, Honorable Speaker, so that we can move forward, Honorable Speaker, because we know that all businesses that are in plenary must have come through uh, committees. Without proper composition of the committees, Honorable Speaker, uh, the work of the plenary, Honorable Speaker, will be limping, Honorable Speaker. And we want to hit the road moving because we only have two, uh, two years remaining, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'm particularly happy because of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee I want you to be and the delegation. Brief. I want you today to be brief. Delegated Legislation, Honorable Speaker Committee, because as we move forward, we have uh, the BBI report coming into the House, and we need members who can really move forward this particular report, Honorable Speaker. So, Honorable Speaker, I do support. Very well. Let's have a Honorable Nyamai. Thank you, Honorable. Honorable Nyamai, I've given you your mic. Yes. You Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I would like to, from the onset, say that I do support uh, this uh, motion. And I also would like to thank the majority leader, minority leader, and the majority and minority whip for very good work done. Honorable Speaker, I know that it is extremely difficult to, to balance. I know that they received lots of calls from all levels so that they can come up with this list. Honorable Speaker, I would like also to say that I was here when this list was brought initially, and you could feel that members were not agreeing with it and they withdrew in order to go and uh, consult further. So I would like to commend them for that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to go direct to the purpose of being in a committee. And I would like to encourage members who feel that they have been placed in committees that they don't like, or they are not very happy with, that it all depends on the interest that you have, reading about that committee that I've been put to. I just want to reflect on the day that I was given the committee on lands when we started this parliament. And I wondered how the majority leader then and the leadership thought of placing me in land because I kept feeling that I'm better off in health, in education, in labor, because that is what I understood. But I would like to say that with time you read, you get comfortable, you interact with the members, you interact with the house leadership, and you realize that you'll be able to deliver on your mandate. Honorable Speaker, uh, the, the speaker has talked about the success of Lands Committee. It's not about expertise, it is about interest and ensuring that you deliver on the mandate that you are given. Mr. Speaker, I would like to say that I've also heard from the graveyard that we are going to get uh, some more chairs who are women. Honorable Speaker, I'm looking forward to that, uh, Mr. Speaker. I am really looking forward and I would like to thank the party leadership for placing women in positions of leadership. Mr. Speaker, I'm not saying that men do not lead very well. They do. But the fact that leaders of the political parties saw it wise to have these great women sit and chair committees is a matter that needs to be commended. So let me thank uh, the, the party leaders and tell them that it's great to have women sitting and chairing committees. And I can assure you that women who have led committees have done it extremely well. Mr. Speaker, just... Uh, I, as I support, I would like to say that as I sit, I've realized that positions of leadership in this house, whether it is leadership of a committee or membership of a committee, depends on the leaders of political parties. And I think this is a matter that we need to respect. I did not understand it when I was a first time member of parliament, but now I fully understand that being a member of a committee or even chairing a committee is uh, is determined by a party, and that I have a responsibility to ensure that I push the agenda of the party that I belong to. Thank you, Honorable Speaker.
Asante sana mheshimiwa speaker kukunipa fursa hii uh, kuchangia katika mswada huu. Kwanza kabisa naunga mkono Mia Filmia, mswada huu ulioletwa na kiongozi aliyo wengi katika bunge hili. Mheshimiwa speaker mimi nimechaguliwa kwa mara ya pili sasa hivi. Na nikiangalia kazi kubwa ya utendaji kazi katika bunge la kitaifa ama kutengeneza sheria ama kuangalia usimamizi yanaoendelea katika sekta zetu za uh, wajibikaji mheshimiwa speaker naona kazi kubwa inafanyika katika kamati na kubadilishwa kwa kamati ama wale wanaokaa kwenye kamati kwa katikati ya muhula mimi naona pia ni uzima kwa sababu kitu ambacho ningependa kuambia wenzangu ni kuwa katika kazi yako kwenye kamati uliochaguliwa hata kama sifa ni yako lakini ukiwa na ari ya kuchangia katika vikao kama vile basi tayari wewe utakuwa ni mmoja katika wale unatenda kazi mimi mheshimiwa speaker nilipochaguliwa kwenye kamati ya mashamba wakati ule bunge lilipoanza bunge la 17 siku na umahari vizuri lakini nilipochaguliwa kama naibu wa mwenyekiti niliweza kujua na mipango kuangalia ni namna gani naweza kuwajibika mbali na kuwa kwenye bunge na kuzungumza lakini nikiwa kwenye kamati kuna mengi ambayo tumefanya katika kamati ya mashamba na natoa shukrani kwa kuweza kuregeshwa tena kwenye kamati hii ili niweze kuwajibika kwa sababu kwangu mimi miaka iliyobakia kwa uwezo wa Mwenyezi Mungu nitafanya kazi iwezekanavyo ili katika zile sheria ambazo zimekuwa na utata katika mambo masuala ya mashamba katika yale masuala ambayo yameletwa na waheshimiwa wa bunge ndani ya bunge hili la kitaifa vile vile tutaweza kukaa pamoja na kamati ile ile ambayo tumekuwa nayo na naona pia kuna wengine ambao wameongezwa wamebadilishwa tuko na imani kuwa kazi itafanyika mheshimiwa speaker natoa shukrani kwa viongozi wale ambao wanasimamia masuala haya na naunga mkono mswada huu kikamilifu asante sana mheshimiwa speaker very well now the mover is to respond but um, we could probably have a minute each by uh, the my, my deputy minority leader and then the minority whip majority whip sorry proceed uh, thank you thank you mr speaker mr speaker w what is your point of order honorable uh, ngeno just a point of order please yeah speaker remember i've, I've made this request um with the idea that a member has an obligation to serve or not to serve to choose to serve or to choose not to serve speaker it's unfortunate i'm not i, I really want you to it's a point of order, point of order yes I, what is, I, I, i will be very brief and no, very specific you know because the, the the majority leader is supposed to respond yes and so that I is why i would, I would have wished on the point of order what is it speaker i would have wished the majority leader to respond before i made my statement before i make my statement on to what now listen mr speaker that is what i'm saying I want to make my point that you know you know you have you have you have uh, you have risen on a point of order and I've given you honorable Geno. I want you to 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 just put your point then he could he could I don't think he will respond I will respond myself. Speaker I'm on a point of order and my point of order is this. Yes. My point of order is this. I want to request mm -hmm. the sender to take back Yes, that is what I'm saying. The speaker I've been put on a committee um, called Committee of Parliamentary Powers and Privileges. Mr. Speaker, I am not it is a very powerful committee. A very strong committee that is meant to be disciplining members and doing all that. But Mr. Speaker just like the leader of majority had stated clearly that they do these selections to particular committees based on parties and party proposals. I know it is my party which had made this proposal that I be removed from Justice and Legal Affairs Committee and CDF and GCDF. Mr. Speaker, I would so, wish to tell the majority leader and the whip 
to take it back to the center and okay. tell them okay. that I'm not going okay. to serve uh, okay. that, that committee. Now, now let, let, me, let me respond to that briefly, Honorable uh, Ngeno. You, you, are, you are perfectly valid to raise issues, whatever issues in the House, but the procedure is what you have missed out. What you need to do is, since this thing will not be changed, it will be either uh, adopted or rejected, you can now make a specific uh, formal request uh, to the selection committee when they sit, then they could, uh, a, well, if you are just saying you are not interested, that's fine. If you are saying that uh, you want to be changed into a different, other different committee, I'm sure they can work it out. So, so Thank you. Thank you, you Mr. Speaker, for you. the opportunity. Mr. Uh, Speaker. What? Mr. Speaker, I wish to. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Now, Speaker. Now, I wish now, to now raise three this. concerns very quickly, and Mr. Speaker, these are to do with the fact that uh, you see these these uh, this is, these committees are formed by the standing orders, and Mr. Speaker, I've observed that uh, Article 95 allows us to be an oversight committee so that we can be able to carry out that mandate of oversight. But when you look at the number of oversight committees, there are only 15 and the membership is 19, Mr. Speaker. That means a total of 285 members. Maybe uh, through the Committee of Procedure and House Rules, in the future we need to consider to increase the number of membership so that we can be able to each serve in a, in a, in a departmental committee for purposes of oversight. Okay. Mr. Speaker, the second quick one is that uh, I also want to propose that maybe after three years, like we have done, the, the standing order should, should allow all committees to come to an end so that we can be able to review and then look at the people who are serving in committees, those that attend, those that do not attend, then we can make those final changes at that point. And finally, Mr. Speaker, when we have parliamentary parties, Mr. Speaker, I think it is important that parliamentary parties be also given a mandate to at least serve have a member in every committee in the House because there is a threshold for a parliamentary party in this House. And the minute a party reaches that threshold, then it makes sense that as long as we have a committee, then we should have a member from that parliamentary party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Uh, my, 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 no, my majority whip in brief, and then we have the mover to respond. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I just want to make one comment that uh, let my colleagues, I want to urge my colleagues, Honorable Speaker, to support this uh, motion by the Committee on Selection. Because, Honorable Speaker, we sought for 30 days, but now we have a few days. And once the speaker pro, uh, announces the vacancies today or, or in the afternoon, it means we'll only have speaker seven days to call for the election. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I want to ask what, that what my is, colleagues... What, what is your point of order, Honorable Ching? Mr. Speaker, as, as, uh, as he replies, and this House of Rules, my, my uh, point of order is, would he confirm to this House that the list as he brought today conforms to the ruling of the speaker on this part of Mr. Speaker, especially regarding Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker's ruling on the possible numbers and memberships of committees of the various parties and independents. Mr. Speaker, the ruling given by Mr. Speaker on that day, Mr. Speaker, indicated clearly at, at, at page 11 on the proposed numbers and memberships of members to committees. And Mr. Speaker, talking for small parties, this is what the speaker say that for Frontier Alliance Party, the PNU, Democratic Party, MDG, each with one member in the in house, are entitled to two two slots per party. Would okay. he confirm that this list this list conforms to the speaker's ruling on this matter, Mr. Speaker? Okay. Okay. Minority uh, whip. And, and, and then we, we probably must... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, through your, your guidance, Mr. Speaker, let us, not do, let us not bring briefless point of order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you are a member of a party and you are the only one in this house, how do you occupy two committees, Mr. Speaker? Honorable Ocheng is the only member for MDG in this house and he wants to be in two committees, Mr. Speaker. Secondly, we have put him through the selection committee under committee of... Regional, co regional coordination and integration, Mr. Speaker. If he thinks that is not a committee, Mr. Speaker, let him resign like jo jo Johanna Angano, Mr. Speaker. That is a very important committee, Mr. Speaker. Well, le let's hear um, the mic, please, and uh, let's, we can finalize this. In the interest of time, Mr. Speaker, I wish just to say I support the motion 
And uh, I support the motion, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Majority Party. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, uh, I, I, I just wish to thank members for ventilating on this list. You can now appreciate how difficult it is to place 349 members within 622 slots. If you divide 622 by 349, it's one point something. So there's no way you're going to have every member in two committees. It's simple mathematics. Mr. Speaker, let me also explain that all the chairmen also sit in a liaison committee. It's a coordination committee for the chairman. So you'll find they'll be in two. Chaired by the speaker. A number of them will also chair, because of the specific committees they are having, will also be called upon to be in appointments committee, which sits only when cabinet has been appointed. Could be once in five years or in two years. Or selection committee, which only meets like it's sat the third time in the seven, three years. So there are some committees that are almost ad hoc. Yeah? So you might be counting a member is in three or four, but it's in those small committees. But we have ensured that every member has at least one committee. And specifically, the Honorable Johanna Ngeno, who raised his own issue why he's been removed from JLAC. Mr. Speaker, the report I have here on attendance in committees, and I hate to say this, but I have to put it on record. Out of 75 meetings between January to October of JLAC, the Honorable Ngeno attended only one. Now, so Mr. so Mr. Speaker, we must take cognizance of the poor attendance of members, and we cannot continue burdening the other members with some who don't attend. And, and this is something we are going to follow up, that a member who does not attend four sittings is supposed to be reported by the chairman. But because members have been holding chairman to ransom, that if you report us, we are going to impeach you. I will take over that responsibility. And I will monitor, I will monitor that if members are not attending four meetings consecutively, the letter to the whip, we have the template. The only thing that will change is the date and the name. So Mr. Speaker, with those remarks, I beg to uh, reply. OK. So I proceed to put the question, which is that further to the resolution of the House of, of Tuesday, 5th December 2017, appointing members to various committees and pursuant to provisions of Standing Order 173, this House further approves the appointment of the following members to their respective committee as specified in the order paper. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Many as of our contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. And Honorable members, time being 2.30, uh, time being 1, this house stands adjourned until Wednesday, 15th July 2020 at 2.30 p.m.